as you know, we were supposed to have a public event out on the rim of Kilauea out by Jagger Museum, but the volcano had different ideas and air quality was not conducive to that, so we have gone to plan B to hold our media event inside here. So you may be asking yourself, uh, volcano awareness, who could not be aware of the volcano, especially on a morning like this? But the fact is, there's a lot of people that live on the slopes of Hawaiian volcanoes that haven't erupted uh, for 25 or more years. And so our goal this month is to get those folks and really everyone to think about the volcanoes in their backyards. So we are kicking off Volcano Awareness Month this morning in cooperation with Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, Hawaii County Civil Defense, and the University of Hawaii at Hilo. And as Janet alluded to, we are certainly a place to be aware of. The National Park Service preserves incredible volcanic sites around the country, yet none of them are as active as Kilauea and Mount Loa. And what a backdrop we would have had for this event had we been out on the summit. As the land manager of this incredible resource, we work hand in glove, as I mentioned, with USGS, all of the scientists who have their finger on the pulse and constantly monitor these mighty mountains that we have in our backyard. We work closely with county agencies. I know you're going to hear from Quince in a little bit in emergency planning and timely response. And we do all of this for the visitors who come here from near and far with curiosity, awe, and respect for the power of this landscape. And believe me, it's very difficult when we have to turn them away um, because um, the volcano has her own ideas. But we encourage the visitors to become aware through their own perceptions and experiences on trails that descend into craters and lava tubes, loop around spatter ramparts and steam vents, and cross pahoehoe and a'a flows dotted with stands of lava trees that people just can't imagine could grow. Lastly, we encourage visitors to become aware of the perspectives of the host culture, Hawaii's first people. Pele has long been a part of our culture. She is much, much more than an old lady walking on the side of the road late at night, or the white dog you might see when just before an eruption. Um, Pele is volcanism, the red hot molten lava that comes out of the earth, the steam that rises at Wahine Kapu, the sulfurous plume that rises from Halema'uma'u, the cool black lava seen all over our landscape, Volcanic activity has been documented in Hawaiian history <clears throat> in our chants for hundreds of years. <clears throat> These chants are timeless because they continue today. The chant Ayala O Pele speaks about Pele, who is on Hawaii Island. Ayala O Pele i Hawaii e. Pele is in here in Hawaii. Keha maila i mau kele e. She's dancing at Mount Kele. Uhi uha mayana e. She surges and puffs like she's doing today. <laughs> this way. Keno me aela ia pune e. Munching away at Puna on the East Rift. Kamea nani kai paliuli e. Paliuli. Um, she makes Paliuli beautiful with her fiery light at night. And I'd like to say that uh, I was also, like Keola, thinking about Pele Honua Mea and her brother Palikapu and their little sister Hiyaki Kapoleo Pele and thinking about their decision to travel here and to move to this island and to make this island their home like all of you have, like all of us have. And with that decision comes a kuleana responsibility uh, to care for this island, to be aware of the incredible power and beauty that the volcano provides. For the forces that shape this island, that have created and shaped this island, uh, spawn earthquakes, lava flows, volcanic emissions. And for the mortals that live here on this island, sometimes there are events that's not conducive to a comfortable life. So Hawaiian Volcanoes Observatory, Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, Hawaii County Civil Defense Agency, we work in partnership 
to do our best to inform and warn you when these hazards be come to a point where there's someone untenable. But for me, this event is more important than uh, 2010, 2012, and 2016, which will be celebrating the observatory in the park. There we'll be celebrating ourselves and the people that have come before us and worked. But this month, we're celebrating the volcano itself. And for that, that is my life, is the volcano. So this is the month that truly means everything to me. I want to take this opportunity to announce two major initiatives to improve and expand volcano monitoring in Hawaii. First, HVO is in the process of doing a fundamental upgrade of our monitoring networks with ARA or stimulus funds. While the networks are working very well now, the upgrade will allow us to receive more useful information from each monitored location and make the networks more expandable. Most of our seismic sensors were installed in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, so the upgrade to 21st century standards will be dramatic. The upgrades are planned to be completed by September 2011 and will create a handful of temporary jobs. Second, HVO has started a formal cooperative relationship with the School of Ocean and Earth Sciences and Technology at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. This relationship should enhance volcano research in Hawaii and the training of volcano scientists. Finally, HVO is getting old. In the year 2012, HVO, the beginning of volcano monitoring in the U.S., will be 100 years old. We're planning activities that will focus on the contribution made to the field of volcanology by observatories, in particular HVO. And we have a lot to celebrate. 